Hey, who does the cooking in your house? Uh, why don't you head to the comments and let us know. Is it you? Is it your roommate or your spouse? Uh, who does the cooking? It might be a different question, but who's the cook? <laughs> Sometimes the person who does it is the one that has the time or whatever. Uh, so who, who does the cooking? I'm curious about that. Have you ever noticed the difference between how dads cook versus how moms cook? <laughs> Oh, I love this picture because dad's just trying to pass on his knowledge of, you know, barbecuing to the next generation. And, you know, sometimes it's best just to throw them in the fire and just, you know, give them the experience. Or how about this picture? Can you spot the mom meal versus the dad meal? Here's a hint. The mom meal is drizzled with balsamic vinegar. <laughs> The dad's was just plopped out of a package on a plate and said, here's a fork. Or how about this one? Uh, even the way moms and dads eat lunch is different. You know, moms are all about the experience and dads are all about not losing one drop of ketchup. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> Let's look in the Bible at another example of moms cooking. <laughs> We're continuing in our series, hashtag hope wins. And today I want to talk to you about there was always enough. There was always enough. If you have a Bible, uh, why don't you turn to 1 Kings, 1 Kings, chapter 17, verses 8 to 16. I'm not sure where 1 Kings is. Just look it up in the table of contents. It's there in the beginning. Many centuries ago, just to kind of set up the, the story for you, many centuries ago in the land of Israel, God raised up a prophet a prophet is a spokesperson for God, someone that God delivers messages to the people through. So this, this prophet's name was Elijah. We see Elijah a much later in the life of Jesus, where Elijah actually comes, he and Moses come and meet and talk with Jesus. Pretty amazing. So this is a very important prophet. And uh, God sent him, sent Elijah, to go confront the wicked king of Israel, King Ahab. He, his wife was the equally wicked Queen Jezebel. You may have heard of Jezebel. In fact, her name's kind of a, a, a synonym for an evil person. We might just say, oh, that person's a real Jezebel. It's, this, this, is the, this is the power couple that we're talking about. And God, uh, God sent Elijah with this message to King Ahab. He said, God is sending a drought to our land. It's not going to rain for a few years until God says so. Well, of course, this did not make the king very happy. So Elijah goes and he hides out in the wilderness and he kind of camps out by this little brook, this little um, source of water for him. And God does something amazing. I don't know if I've ever heard of this before, but God did a miracle for him and God fed Elijah twice a day by sending ravens to fly to him, bringing food, bringing bread and meat, specifically the Bible says, twice a day. So he's got his water and his food. It's pretty amazing. Well, as you can imagine, as the, the drought goes on, that little brook dried up and now his water source is gone. So God sent him, sent Elijah to the west coast, sort of across the country of Israel, uh, to the west coast on the Mediterranean Sea, to a little village called Zarephath. It's kind of a cool name. And I want to uh, pick up the Bible verses right there. So 1 Kings 17, 8. Then the Lord said to Elijah, I have instructed a widow there to feed you. The, some of the other translations, uh, modern translations of the Bible say, God, God said, I commanded a widow there to feed you. But the weird thing is, the interesting thing is, the widow did not know that. So God set up a command. He has set up a plan that will be accomplished and this woman is not even aware that God is going to do something amazing and powerful through her. I'm going to skip down uh, to verse, verse 10. He, Elijah, saw a widow. He comes to this village. He saw a widow gathering sticks and he asked her, would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As, as she was going to get it. So she, the answer was yes. So she's going to go get it. He calls out to her and bring me a little piece of bread too. But she said, and she kind of just stopped in her tracks. She turned around. She said, I, I swear by the Lord your God. You know, she's speaking to this prophet. She recognizes him as a man of God. She says, I swear by the Lord your God. I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks 
to cook this last meal. And then my son and I will die. Wow. That is intense. So the man of God asks for a little food. And she says, I don't have any food. In fact, all I've got is just a little teeny bit of oil and a little teeny bit of flour. I, I, just enough to make just a little, like a cracker, a little piece of bread for my son and I. And there's, it, it, it's, it's such a horrible time in this, in this drought that she has no hope. And there's so many things that were working against her. First of all, she's a widow with no extended family to take her in. And she lived in a day and age where women were oppressed. And so, man, she couldn't just go get a job. She had a young son to feed, so I'm guessing that she was not an elderly widow. Um, she had no job, no food in the house, and they're in the middle of this famine. There's, there's no rain, so then there's no crops, so then that's a, a famine. There's, there's nothing to eat. And she looked at her available resources, and she literally had no hope but to make a last meal for her son. Like she, she couldn't see any other options around. This, this were the only options in front of her. And, and she said, I've just, I, I have no hope for anything to improve. So what can I do? I'm going to make a meal and we're going to lay down and die. In verse 13, Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you've said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. What should she do? Either Elijah must have been very arrogant and rude, or Elijah was very mean. I mean, how, how could he say, don't, don't be afraid, just uh, go ahead and make some food, but make it for me first. Like, we're talking about this poor family's final meal, their last meal. How dare he take the food right out of their mouths? Jesus said something that sort of sounded similar to that. And it's written down in John chapter six, verse 27. He was talking to a group of people and it was kind of a strange uh, situation. I won't go all, all into it, but these people were sort of arguing with him back and forth and they were taunting him. And, and they were asking him for food. And Jesus said, don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. Wait a minute. Don't be concerned about food? Like, that's our main concern. Like, that's all we think about. We even, we even summarize the whole purpose of working as putting food on the table. Like, that's our main thing. That's, that is the thing we're concerned about. Well, that along with having a nice table to put the food on and having a house to put the table in and stuff like that. <laughs> So many times we focus on the temporary things. We focus on the things that are going to fade away with time and we neglect or forget about the things that are timeless. It's like when you have the munchies. I don't know if this ever happens to you. This happens to me when I'm working on my sermon. <laughs> and I just think, man, I just need something. So I go down to the kitchen. Has this ever happened to you? I just want something. So I kind of forage around. I want something salty. So I get some chips. Just have, sit, stand there and have a handful of chips in the dark <laughs> where no one else is around. And then I think, well, now I need something sweet. So I forage around, find some cookies. So I eat some cookies. Well, now I need some milk because milk goes with cookies. So I drink some milk and then I think, I need something salty. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? And the thing is, none of it really feeds you. <sighs> There is a, a, a passage in the Bible uh, where I, I feel like the poet uh, who wrote this, a poet named Korah, must have known how I feel. Sometimes you just don't even know what you're hungry and thirsty for, really. And he wrote in Psalm 42, 1, As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God, when can I go and stand before him? You know, if we really think about it, we make time to hang out with our friends and 
then we say, but we don't have time to pray. And then we wonder why we don't feel close to God. Why do we cl feel close to our friends, but we don't feel close to God? We can, we can really read social media posts for hours, and yet we say, well, I don't really have time to read the Bible. You don't understand, I'm super busy. And then without God's wisdom in you, in your mind, in your heart, we make foolish decisions that we later regret. Sometimes we say, well, I can't afford to give to God's work. I can't afford to contribute. Doesn't God realize that we're down to our last little bit of flour and oil? Can't afford it. Our problem is that we put our hope in temporary things like downtime, me time, relationships, finances, and everything except for God. Let's circle back to our, our story about Elijah the prophet and the widow. Uh, in verse 13, Elijah said to her, don't be afraid, go ahead and do just what you've said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. We've been talking about this. Your hope won't disappoint you when your hope is in the Lord. Down in verse 15, so she did as Elijah said. I, this is amazing to me that she would do that. And she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. Even though she could not afford it, this is all she had, she gave what the Lord asked her for, which was just a little homemade bread for God's prophet first. And that order was important in this case. It was an act of obedience. She decided to put her hope in the Lord and what he promised. And in the end, she traded her last meal for a never ending pasta bowl. <laughs> that is awesome. I, I want to come back to the title of my message today. There was always enough. That's from the scripture we just read. Her flour and oil lasted until God sent rain again and the gardens began to grow. And she and her, her son had unlimited breadsticks. Man, that is awesome. But I, I want to say it a little bit different way. There always was enough. There always was enough. Even when it looked like her resources were about to run out. God's resources had just begun. She just couldn't see those resources until she surrendered what she had to God. She literally surrendered it all to God. You know what, looking back now, I realize Elijah wasn't mean and God wasn't selfish. God was just giving this woman, uh, this widow, a chance to step out in faith and learn who God is and really establish a, a relationship with him. And in the midst of it, she received a miracle. Wow. Your hope won't disappoint you when your hope is in the Lord. So what is God's solution? Well, on the cross, as Jesus was about to die, you know what he said? I am thirsty. Interesting. So Jesus became thirsty so that you could have your thirst for life quenched. Jesus laid down his life on the cross for you and for me so that you and I could have eternal life. In John chapter six, another place in the Bible, verse 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And he's talking about in your soul, in the deepest part of you, that whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. In another place in John chapter four, he said, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh 
bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Wow. So what do we need to do as a result of this message? What do we, what do we need to do next? Well, so what I want to encourage you to do. Accept Jesus' gift of nourishment for your soul. Accept Jesus' gift of nourishment for your soul. Seek Him first before other things. And put Him first before other things. Love Him first above everything else. I'd like to pray for you right now. Could we just pause for a moment? And I, I don't know if you know, you've been busy and watching the kids and doing the different things, but everybody, could we just pause for a moment and pray? And I wanna pray for you specifically. And Lord, I just pray that you would help us to not settle, but to seek you. Help us to not settle for things that don't really satisfy, things that don't really feed us. Lord, help us to come to you and feast on you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would satisfy our inner soul's hunger and thirst for you. Lord, there is, a, there is a hunger and thirst. There is a need in our lives that cannot be filled any other way. And so I'm asking you, Jesus, right now to fill that need, to fill that void, to fill that hole in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, for everyone, everyone who's participating, everyone who is tuning in right now, Lord, I pray that you would bless them with you. That, that they would never be hungry and thirsty again. That they would be satisfied on the inside. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I, I want to invite you today to, to put your faith in Jesus, to become his apprentice. Maybe you have kind of wandered away from Jesus or, or the faith, or may, maybe you're just coming back, or maybe you've just never really even considered that you could put your faith in Him. Don't put your faith in, in flour and oil, in the things that you can see, you can touch, the things that fade away, the things that run out, the th things that rust or mold. Don't put your faith in those things. I want to encourage you and invite you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. How do you do that? Well, you turn from your sin. All those things you, that, that all of us do, we're all sinners. Those things that harm ourselves or others, those things that separate you from God. Turn away from those things and turn your life over to God. Say, God, I'm giving you my life. I'm surrendering. I'm, I'm, I'm giving myself to you. And then let him leave. That's what an apprentice does. The apprentice lets the, let, lets the master read. If you uh, lead, if you'd like to do that today, I want to pray for you. Could we pray one more time? I just want to pray for you. And in fact, I'd like to lead you in a prayer, to coach you in a prayer. So I'll just say a short uh, word or a phrase, and you, you repeat it after me, but say it to Jesus. Prayer is talking and listening to Jesus, okay? So here we go. Uh, if you want to pray that prayer, in fact, I just encourage everyone who's tuning in to pray this prayer with me right now. Let's do it. Jesus, you say, Jesus, Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you starting now. I am your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And you know what? If you prayed that prayer today, Jesus just forgave you of your sins. That is awesome. And I just want to say welcome to the family. One thing that I want to ask you to do just to let me know that you made that decision. Would, would you go to our website? and just uh, scroll a little ways down the page and click on that button that says connect card. Just click on the connect card, give me a little info so I can uh, send you an email. And at the bottom of the connect card online, there's a little box that says, I made a decision to follow Jesus today. Would you check that box so I know how to pray for you specifically? And I will be praying for you by name specifically this week. So let us know what we want to journey with you. I wanna leave you just with one, one thing, everybody who's tuning in. In the end of the Bible, the last book that talks about uh, our future as followers of Jesus Christ, in Revelation 7, verses 16 and 17, there is a promise for you. It's a promise for all of God's people in heaven in the life to come. This is what, it, what he said. They, and I'm gonna just apply it to you. You will never again be hungry or thirsty. You will never be scorched by the heat of the sun. For the Lamb on the throne, that's Jesus, will be the, your shepherd. He will lead you to springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. 
let's think about that today and this week. Let's, let's let your imagination run wild with what that beautiful place in heaven is gonna be like with Jesus because we're, we're living in a way right now so that we will get to spend eternity with him in heaven. Man, thanks for participating today. What an awesome Sunday together. Hey, if you're new to NFC, text new to NFC to 97000. We want to connect with you and be in, uh, in, involved in all that you're doing and that we can keep you up to date with what we're doing. Also, you can go to the website. You can fill out a connect card there, nfc.church. Also, uh, we want to be praying for you. This is, uh, this is a great time to just be praying for each other. And one of the ways that we can pray for you is Text your prayer request to 253-733-1640. We will, as pastors, we get together and we, we divvy those out and we pray for each one of you that texts in. So make sure to be doing that. We want to be praying for you. Uh, if you have not signed up for a Bible study, it is not too late. Take the time. This is an awesome opportunity to connect with people that are seeking Jesus. So do that. Get signed up. There's different groups. Uh, as we saw earlier in the service today, uh, for ladies, mixed groups, men's groups, all of that, get signed up, go to the app or the website. You can register for that now. Also, if you got kids in the room and they've been running around during service, now's their time for service. Head over to YouTube. We have uh, some videos that are age appropriate for them. Just going to help them worship God and they are fun. They'll get them dancing and moving and get some of their energy out. So head on over there and that is going to be a great way to do that. Moms. Listen up, if you are a mom and you hear my voice, go register right now. Uh, registration's open until noon. We wanna send you a Mother's Day gift. So go over, register. Um, you can do that on the app or the website. Also, we want to send you that gift. It closes at noon, so sign up, okay? We, we want you to, to feel appreciated today. Also, mom's in the place, uh, you get the day off. So you don't have to watch the kids or nothing. So, uh, hey, do that. Uh, all right. Have a happy Mother's Day. Hi, Mom. If my mom's watching, love you. Uh, have a great day. We will see you next week.